Hi folks, let's machine this casting pattern out of some urethane tooling board. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. The piece of raw material, quite a bit larger than what we actually need. So let's mark off an area and let's saw cut it down closer to size. We're using the Saunders Machine Works DeWalt base, not for the DeWalt saw, simply because it was quick, reliable, and secure way to clamp this and then cut with a hand jigsaw. Let's head over to the Boss Laser, cutting a sheet of half inch MDF as a sort of fixture template jig to support the super glue method here for this workpiece. We love having this laser in our shop and we like this so much, I think it's gonna be a new product for the Saunders Machine Works fixture plates. Take a quick look at where that laser jig is going to fit on the Tormach. And the super glue trick. So card here, we actually have found a new type of super glue that works even better. And we found a new type of tape from 3M that's called a very high bond masking tape. It's great when you've got a material like say steel that doesn't always want to adhere as well with normal masking tape. Before we actually super glue our part down, we're setting our Z0 off the top of our masking tape, which matches our work coordinate system in Fusion 360 right there, which is the bottom of the stock and the bottom of the workpiece. I'm marking an F on the front of our workpiece just so I don't mix up the orientation. And then when I'm doing this, I like to practice once before we put the super glue on, just to make sure you've got everything out of your way and you've got the motion down. That way, after we've got the super glue on, things tend to go as planned. Using the Heimer to find our work coordinate system. And setting the height of our first tool, we're going to use the Lakeshore Taz half inch rougher to remove the extra inch of material that we just didn't have a choice because the material came as two inches and then to rough out the majority of the casting pattern. Checking the tool height just to make sure it matches 3.393. I want to do a better job of controlling the dust that, than we did when we machined our last casting pattern. Two ways to do that. Number one, better feeds and speeds to make a larger chip. And the second way is to use a vacuum. We just picked up a dust deputy, it modified our shop vac. Click here to the build info in the Fusion 360 model for the parts that we laser cut to make this modification to our vacuum. But it's a really great improvement. I really recommend it for any shop. And we're off. So the first thing we're doing is a 3D adaptive with that TAS tool. All the RPMs we've got, 3 thousandths of an inch feed per tooth or about 46 inches per minute, taking a 75% step over and a one inch depth of cut. What I like about this recipe is it's making a bigger chip and that's going to really help cut down on the dust. And let's take a look at some slow motion footage to get a better idea of what that cut actually looks like. It's actually a really nice chip size. And even though this is a composite material, it reminds me of the Paul Diebolt video we did on lathe feeds and speeds where you really want to get those C's and sixes. In other words, we want a real chip, but we also want a chip that breaks and it doesn't become long and stringy. The shot back plus the dust deputy, it definitely helped, but it's no replacement for a proper dust extraction system. So I think we're going to pick one of those up for some future projects. Now we're coming in with our 3D adaptive to do the majority of the material removal. Same speeds and feeds. The one important thing that we are doing here is under the third tab for heights. We have our bottom height set as 
0.1 inches above the bottom of our part. And you can see that with this blue line here. That's important because that will ensure that we have full super glue contact across the whole surface area of the stock as we're going through this adaptive operation. One more 3D adaptive. This is with our tool 31, it's a quarter inch three flute end mill. And I've got rest machining checked. And really all this is doing is cleaning up the inside corners of the casting part. And in the end, I don't think this was necessary. My thought was to try to reduce those corner materials to make sure that when we did our surfacing tool pass later, we had a really consistent tool pressure to maintain best surface finishes. And if this were any sort of a material like aluminum or steel where there was uh, a more tool pressure, I think it was a wise move. But here, I think we could have gotten away with not doing it. And the same thing with the horizontal. Better safe than sorry, especially on a part like this where we've only got one piece of raw material and it's relatively expensive. But the adaptive with the TAS actually left a really good finish. So I don't know that it was worth the time, and this was a fair amount of time to do this. Also, remember the task at hand. It's a casting pattern. We had great floor finishes from the adaptive. And while there are certain things about this casting, like the draft angle, that are really important, and I want to try to avoid chipping on the material, the reality is the RA or the, the smoothness of the floor finishes here isn't going to have a huge impact on the quality of the casting. Now, this is important. We are using a 3D contour. And one of the things I love is that Fusion gives us pretty good descriptions. In this case, the best strategy for finishing steep walls. So if we look at this part, it has what's called draft angle. So none of these surfaces are square. They all have a little bit of taper to it. And drafting is something I don't know a ton about and casting in general. Fusion does have some pretty cool basic analysis tools under the inspect draft analysis, which can help you understand things about the quality of that angle but basically it needs that draft angle that way after we pour the sand around this casting pattern to make our mold we can then lift the wren shape piece out if we didn't have a draft angle it either wouldn't lift out or when you did lift it out you would end up damaging or changing the shape of our sand casting pattern we're using a bull nose end mill it's a quarter inch tool with a 30 thou bull nose radius on it we're going pretty quick all the rpms that we've got which is 5140 and six thousandths of an inch feed per tooth, about 90 inches a minute. We're taking 20 thousandths of an inch maximum step down and make sure when you do this to leave a smoothing check. Card here to the NYC CNC page where we've taken all of these cam operations though and turned them into a Fusion 360 template. So you can download that template to better understand, better look at these tool paths, maybe even apply them to your own casting pattern. I was really happy with how this turned out. We had almost no chipping and we've got an absolutely superb surface finish. And it's an awesome example of making an absolute beautiful part with the Tormach. After we finish that contour, we're gonna switch over to do a scallop. And scallop is really one of the best 3D tool paths. What we're doing is we've got these two chains selected, the outside and the inside edge of that fillet. We've got the touch surfaces selected for each one of those, and that takes a little bit of work to go through and check each one of those. And we've got contact point boundary and the slope angle defined. Those are the major settings that help us get a really clean tool path to walk around this shape and help us machine that fillet. And I didn't want to have to select that on each one of the six items. So we created a pattern, right click, add to new pattern. 
and the pattern type that we chose was called a duplication pattern. And this is the first time I'd ever used that. If we read the pop-up box description, creates a pattern using operations and toolpaths as the source and the sketch point as the target. This is pretty awesome. Let's walk through how we did that. Right click, add to new pattern, duplication pattern. What's my source? You gotta be very deliberate. We're gonna pick that point. What's my targets? I'm gonna scroll, move over, zoom in. I've already forgotten. There we go, that same point there, right there, and so forth. So what I'm gonna do now, we've created our pattern. Let's simulate it and double check that our pattern was created successfully and it's not going to crash into our part. At the bottom right of your screen, we can click on this section here to see the first one. I wanna click on the next one or even the third one to see that toolpath. I've got toolpath checked along with show points. And what I can do is click on one of those points and I can zoom in and make sure that toolpath is correctly modeled. In other words, it's not going to crash or it's, we haven't selected the wrong point. Great. So next up, we have a separate operation. It's got the same work coordinate system location as our first setup, but this one's called the final Z level. And what it does is first it takes tool 31 and it walks all the way around the profile of the part, but we're doing so with 10 thou radial stock to leave. So it's not actually touching the side wall of our part. And after we've taken that sort of a roughing pass around the part, we're then going to come in with our bullnose end mill, do a similar type of contour that walks all the way down the outside of the part. And the only problem is that when we reach the bottom of the part, we've still got that 30 thou radius of that bullnose that's not actually finishing the edge like I'd like to. So then we switch back to tool 31. We set the top height to be the bottom of our model plus 35 thou, so just five thousandths of an inch more than the radius of the prior tool. And so that's going to come in with the square shoulder tool and finish up that edge of our part. And finally, we've got to remove the part from our laser cut MDF base. So there's really three ways to remove super glue. Acetone, heat, or a mechanical means of either prying it apart or hitting it from the side to dodge it loose. This part's relatively fragile. So we're using the razor blade to just lift an edge slightly and then a paint scraper just to work its way under there and start to pry that loose. The trick is to try to get that paint scraper either between or below the tape and it ended up working out great. We didn't mar our part whatsoever. And it took a few minutes, but it was well worth the trade-off of having the ease of work holding through the risky part of machining the whole thing in one setup. Folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. I was super happy. This stuff is really nice to work with, but we even got a lot better in this video compared to the last video that we did when we made the other casting pattern for the South Bend lathe. I like the larger chip size, I like the work holding, I like the cam toolpath, so all in all, a win. Again, check out the NYC CNC website for more information on the toolpaths, the materials that we use, as well as all things Fusion 360 and CNC. Otherwise, take care, folks. See you soon.